Hello and thank you for tuning into Stampscaping 101. This is a, a cherry tree branch amongst a pretty monochromatic setting here. Just so that the subtleties of this um, pink blossoming branch kind of show up a little bit more. It's not bold or anything like that. It's all kind of in the details right down here, but it's just kind of a... Um, a fun way to approach kind of a single object within a scene. And this is just the bare branch right here with a lot of gel pen and uh, Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White applied there with some additional little dots of pink gel pen dots as well as a Sharpie paint pen. But anyways, this is what this scene looks like on the whole. And I feel it's really all about this kind of this point of focus right here, you know, as well as a little bit with the lighting in here and the fog and the mist or something like that. But um, just kind of a fun scene to do. I mean, it's just doing a, a monochromatic um, scheme in there, adding that pigment ink. And I added uh, a lot of it using just a cotton ball so I can get, you know, a wide area of coverage. Much out that you don't use too much ink, though. Always blot off your tools before kind of applying it so you can have a better idea of um, what's going to be applied to your scene before you do it. And uh, going into this after that initial stamping, coloring, and uh, pigment ink work with this branch down here and just kind of illustrating it to look more like a blossoming branch instead of, you know, dead of winter type of branch or whatnot. Um, have it coming up from the bottom here. That's a little bit of a change. A lot of times I have kind of overhanging tree limbs coming from the top, but this is kind of a fun way to do it when you have this large amount of open space here in the form of this water. So fun stuff. Hope you enjoy the video if you choose to watch it. And if you have any questions, just drop us a note in the comment section. Okay, let's see what we can do as far as a refinement on a given composition. Let's stamp out something with the maple pear as... I don't know if this is the main stamp, it'll be a, end up being a background image, but... Uh, it's kind of the one that I'm starting my scene and kind of building the uh, foundation around. Or it's the foundation and I'm building around that foundation, rather. Okay, that's the maple. Brook. This is the Soft Hill stamp. It has that kind of that similar foliage that you'll find right here. I'm going to take this and about, oh, about a quarter inch, I'm really wiping off just about all the ink. Not all of it, but most of it. And then about an inch of the stamp, I'm removing about half the ink probably. Okay, so a really good amount of it on the bottom. I'll show you why that is here in a second, but I'm going to mask off these trees. You don't have to mask off carefully whatsoever have some of the trees showing okay but now where I've wiped off a lot of the ink down here it should stamp out much lighter right so if it stamps out much lighter it won't be kind of an obtrusive mark going into those trees right there okay and I'll wipe off some of this again I'll use a little portion of this again for over here and I'll mask off my trees a little bit bit more of a mountain right here. Okay, now we have all this space down here, but I have plans for that and that I'm going to use that bare branch stamp down there eventually. Let me get a little bit of this extra tree in here. This is the maple pear. Just a little bit more tree textures. Okay, could be bushes or whatever. Come on the side, maybe. And it doesn't have to be there. I'm just kind of filling in a little bit more. I'm going like so. Something like that. And let's see. Let's leave this as is, I think. I could stamp some other things down there, though, but I'm unsure if I want to. I could put some reeds in here. Oh, let's leave it as is. Okay, now on my first 
go around with this composition and uh, foreground idea. I just stamped it too light and with colors. I thought it was kind of distracting and um, it should have been more of a kind of a muted background than what it ended up being. So the way that I'm going to do it today is going to be much easier than the previous incarnation and I think more effective based on the end results of what I saw the last time. Okay, starting off with the London Fog. We're just kind of creating a monochromatic grayscale. Um, coloring scheme, lighting scheme, etc. Okay, I will add some tone to this, but right now we'll just kind of mute it out. It's supposed to look like a kind of a real foggy kind of atmospheric day here in this location. All right, now when we're doing this, when we're, we are coloring our scenes, we're coloring, but we're also creating a lighting scheme, okay? That's where people kind of getting into scenic stamping for the first time. Um, if they want to do kind of a depiction of light, this is where they get a little confused sometime because they're used to coloring things and coloring whole spaces and images and areas within that space. With lighting, it's really similar, except you don't color everything out, okay? So you retain some of your lights. And where you retain that light in your scene will end up being either a light source or most likely reflected light. So if I leave a little area in the sky, it could be a little bit of cloud, which would be reflected light. Again, that's reflecting off the moisture. A little bit of uh, space in the trees or on the you know, this, uh, ground cover. Um, that could be the light that is hitting that area, okay? Oftentimes, um, or most of the times, light in the water is, you know, it's light reflecting off the water, right? It's usually not bioluminescence or something like that being created by organisms within that space. It's usually light coming down and reflecting off of it. So I'm smearing a little bit of my color here, but that's all right color that was ink that was on the tree there. I could have waited till it's dried a little bit, but I don't feel like it, so I won't. Okay, water. Just kind of put these little striations in here and um, there you have your light. Let's vary it a little bit more. Okay, I'm using the side like an edge, like a very thin edge of this to get this kind of thinner line, okay? And if I want it thicker, I just kind of build it out. Let's get in here and the water a little bit more too. Sometimes these brushes are not the most conducive for a certain mark, that's why you can use pens or alcohol pens or something like that to color in. Kind of more detailed area, but you can get some good general areas. You can get a little detailed with this by just going with a little bit of a edge of it like so. good for my Memento London Fog. It's a very light gray. I'm going with a little bit of a darker gray in the Marvy gray. It's not a lot darker, and it's of a similar shade. It's, it's not really a warm gray or a cool gray. I see it as more of a neutral gray. And by and large, we'll add this to the same area that we applied the previous one because this isn't much lighter, I mean darker, but it does give an extra layer of ink 
and uh, it just helps to fill out the area a little bit. It is going a little bit darker though, so we are working a little bit of value into it. It's when we move into the much darker colors, which I don't know if we're doing because this is supposed to be, you know, kind of a foggy day where you won't have like really harsh shadows. tone on my mountains, my hills here. Okay, now where are the trees? I kind of almost don't see the trees very well <laughs> because they're supposed to blend in with things, but they blend in so well I can't even see them, so I'm going to kind of define the tops of my trees. Um, with a little bit of shadow in the back of them. So see that? That's my tree line right there. And I'm just going to put this like about like so. Well, maybe I'll do a much more careful mask there. <laughs> and that's all that's really needed. Okay, well, so we'll do that. Now this isn't going to be much darker, but it'll be a little bit darker than in the background than those trees, hopefully. So we'll see how it goes. That, yeah, see those trees start to kind of stand out a little bit more. We've kind of redefined the, the silhouette of them. I guess we can come all the way over here too. Something like that. We'll go a little bit darker too, but let's uh, kind of blend this out a little bit more. Okay, now my, kind of my instinct, which is the thing that I'm doing, is to kind of leave this a little bit lighter like that, but knowing what, that I'm going to put that, going to try to <laughs> define that uh, cherry tree, blossoming cherry tree branch, I need to make it a little bit darker so that those white blossoms stand out against the background. Okay. So this was stamped out in black. Let's move to the same black and continue the toning. Okay, let's use that same mask right here. Watch out when you move to a much darker color, okay? Just kind of take it in a nice gradual pace. Masking off right here. Okay, so there's a little more of that tree. And I'll hit some of these hills a little bit. I'm going to have this kind of mist building up from the bottom. So maybe I'll darken the tops of them. Vary it a little bit though. <coughs> have some kind of this oscillation of uh, light and dark in here. Meaning just don't tone everything out. I do concentrate it quite a bit on the left and right edges because that hopefully will frame off the, the, the composition a little bit more, having things darker around the perimeter. Kind of just stick to one little area. It's, it's kind of grabbing a little bit, but not too bad. It would be nice to have a little bit of a thicker layer of that memento ink down there because it's a little bit more slippery in consistency, um, whatever viscosity, than the Marvy ink. Okay, now, I mean, we can really see that darkness um, starting to come out in that space. So, a lot more contrast is being added to the scene. Okay. Adding some tone at the base of the uh, the trees. You can see the base of the trees right here are darker. Okay, I'm just going in and reiterating it with some tone blended in as well. So you're actually using some grayscale. On the stamp image, it's just a bunch of black and white. It's black dots, you know, that are uh, condensed in some areas for a deeper shade. You 
you can see this kind of line around the uh, edge of the water where that shadow is. I'm just going in there with kind of a real gray scale, almost a dry brush touch with this and building that, that up a little bit, making that a little bit more distinct. So in other words, kind of observe your imagery and shade it accordingly. You can look at, take your cues from the actual image. It doesn't have to be kind of a mystery. If it's darker in a certain area on the image, just darken it with the you know, use of some color. Or in this case, just uh, black or gray, rather gray. This is really dry down here. Let's go back and introduce some more of that memento London fog. And you can do this. You can just go back in with a lighter tone. You're not going to make things lighter. You're just going to make things a little bit wetter. Okay? And I want it a little bit wetter because I could spread my black ink out much more gracefully that way. If the paper is a little bit wet on the surface or and or kind of wet in the pulp of the paper. And I need a reinker for my gray. And use a lot more ink. Okay, let me try the marley gray as well. Marley gray is really barely applying. Which means I think that surface is fairly wet. Okay. Let's switch around. This is my black side here. Yeah. That spreads in nicely. I can feel it. It's real slippery on the surface. So I can drag that across. Very easy. Turn it on the side get these striations. Okay, kind of closing in here a little bit more too. I'm making it darker than I normally would because I want that branch, those um, cherry blossoms to stand out. All right, now I'm tempted to come into this with some color, but I, th I think I'm going to retain the entire color range for those cherry blossoms, maybe they'll stand out a little bit more dramatic, you know, in a dramatic way, if they're, they're the only things in color. It's like spot coloring with a, um, in photography.
Putting out a little bit more shadow underneath this tree over here. Okay, let's see. Pretty easy, it's really easy when you're just using, um, you know, you're doing, doing a monochromatic here. All right, now yesterday, doing a scene, I, I stamped this out in, um, with a versifying. I think I'm just going to stick with the dye-based blue. I mean, black ink. <laughs> And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, um, I, it'll just, I can lay my paint, my pigment ink paint on top of the, the dye-based ink much easier than a pigment ink that's sitting on the surface and takes a while to dry. All right, so we're going with just black right here, and I'll just have this kind of this branch kind of coming into it like so. And then we'll do our kind of fun work with that. Holding this down a little bit longer because the paper is fairly wet. I mean, it's not wet to the touch, it's completely dry, but the pulp of the paper is a little bit moist, so I don't want to put this down here and pull it off in it. It's like a vacuum where the ink comes right off of there. All right, let me go for another impression. This is Bear Branch Large, or 122F. If you're ever curious about the images that are used on these scenes, just click on the Show More underneath the video. Uh, it's not on every device where it says Show More, but you click on that. It could be just a space, and if you click on that space, it expands the informational area for given videos, and if you know, whoever posted it has more information and will be down there. Sometimes there isn't really any more information. All right, so we have that these branches coming into it like so. Okay, now before I start to kind of animate these with some additional le uh, leaves and foliage and uh, not leaves, but um, the blossoms. So used to saying foliage. Um, I'm going to start adding some extra effects. Okay, now, yesterday I used this cotton ball here to apply kind of an overall kind of fog scheme to the scene using pigment ink. I'll just use the Hero Hues one. You can use Colorbox, uh, Frost White. I've just been using the Hero Hues one, just, I don't know. No particular reason. I have a lot of uh, open color blocks as well. Okay. I need to get a new piece of paper here, but um, there's quite a bit on here, so it's really too much. This is a really new um, pad here that I'm using, so it really dispenses a lot of ink. So be careful about that. You don't want a ton of ink on here. But I am kind of tapping some of this off to get the consistency that I want. I want a really soft cons uh, soft application of this tone. All right, now I'm not going to use this every... Well, I might use it in a lot of areas, but I'm just going to start... Let me get this out of the way here. I am going to get this overall, hopefully... Something that looks like a kind of a misty type of a. Uh, I have too much ink on here. Uh, kind of a misty illuminated um, setting here. Kind of, you know, how fog might look when it's. There's this kind of a real mellow lighting that's because. I have too much ink on here. Okay, let me blot some of that off. The good thing is, on this gloss, you can just kind of really manipulate it. Now, I'm using this big cotton ball because I'm going for quite a bit of, um, you know, an application with it. Okay, so, see that kind of light up there? It's a little bit more, it's a little bit softer now. Okay, you can kind of move it around a little bit with your finger, too. That's what I do. 
Um, hmm. Did I? No, I didn't throw away this. Let's mask off some of these trees here and maybe get some fog in back of them. I'll use this cotton ball in conjunction with, you know, kind of more of a kind of a detailed, you know, tool for for uh, the application of this for this effect in the form of a Q-tip or something like that. But this works pretty good for kind of general areas. You see that kind of that misty fog kind of rolling in here. Let's get some right back in here. Kind of doing this whole area in here with just a kind of a thin layer. Put some in the foreground here as well. After you kind of lay it down, you kind of have to move it around a little bit and spread it around. Kind of putting some right along the shoreline here. Something like that. See how everything's kind of a glow? It's because it represents moisture kind of suspended in the air, and uh, we have light hitting it. That is fun, and it's fun to apply. The big thing is, is that just don't have too much ink on your applicator. It's when people have too much ink on whatever applicator they're using here, they really run into some problems because it's just leaving these big balls of ink everywhere. Okay, so you probably all have some of these, right? Just your standard cotton swab. I'm really loosening this right here because I want a soft application of this ink. So if you want a soft application, you have to have a soft applicator. Makes sense? So I'm kind of fraying this. I'm loosening up this cotton right here. Don't want to loosen it up so much so that you're tapping, you know, this cardboard stick into the scene, okay? But you kind of want it just in general pretty, pretty loose, okay? My pad happens to be pretty wet, so I'm just going to put a kind of a light application on there. When I say light, it's usually ends up being thicker. Yeah, see, that's really thick right there. But what you do is you just kind of tap it off. And in doing so, it's smashing the tip a little bit more and hopefully getting a little bit softer. You don't want to completely fray it, though. Like I said, you don't want that cardboard stick to be sticking out of there. But let's hit some areas in this and make them a little bit more um, opaque. It's not going to be opaque, but just less transparent. Okay, I took off too much ink. Let's put a little more on here. And apply it where you want. Putting this little fog at the base of the trees. This is where I do kind of oscillate the usage of it, the quantity of it. It's like fog coming through those trees there. A little bit here, a little bit here. You know what I mean? It doesn't really matter where you put it, just as long as you don't put the same amount of it everywhere. I mean, I guess you could if it's like you're in kind of pea soup fog, as they call it. But 
for this, I just want it kind of... I want the imagery to still show. It's not showing as much, of course, because we're adding kind of a, a layer on top of it of, you know, texture. From a textural standpoint, it looks a little much softer. Okay, see this mountain right here? This background one? Let me just kind of blot it off a little bit, and when you make it look lighter, it looks farther back in the distance, doesn't it? Then it creates a little bit of a separation between that background hill and this one right here. The fore it ends up being a foreground hill. I can put a little bit of a fog or mist up on the uh, hills here where I've retained my lighter um, values of the of the paper. Look at that mist in there, huh? Doesn't that kind of take on uh, kind of a more sophisticated, I guess, kind of appearance by having, it's kind of acknowledging something that would almost be invisible, right, during the daytime or something like that, um, in the form of this representational moisture in the air, but it's just kind of illuminating that. So we're kind of acknowledging, all right, there is something between the objects that kind of influences the overall feel of the, of the scene or location, whatever. All right, so we have that going on, kind of a nice atmospheric, uh, statement. Let's take a look at this branch right here and really try to bring this uh, composition to life with the use of some color. Okay, let's go with the... Now I could use a gel pen. If you don't have like, you know, bleed-proof white, you can use a white gel pen. Uh, to do this. White gel pen is, well, maybe I'll use both. Okay, one of them's definitely more um, opaque than the other, in, in that the bleed proof right is much more opaque than this white gel pen. The gel pen that I happen to be using is pretty decent, though. It's, it's a Uniball Signo pen. But it does dry quite a bit darker than what it looks like when it's been freshly applied. It was a little bit more translucent, uh, translucent uh, than it does when it's just been. Uh, utilized. So anyway, let's let's take a look here and see. Kind of clustering my little blossoms here. in front of the branch, behind, 
top, bottom, side. Add however much you want. Uh, I wouldn't torture yourself with saying, okay, well, how much of this looks best? Just, I don't know, if you're having fun, just keep applying it. I don't know if you want to cover up the branch completely where you can't see the branch, but yeah, just apply as much as you want. It is kind of fun watching this. These blossoms kind of come about. It's like, you know, they're sprouting and, you know, you're the one that's kind of instigating it. the right word? Don't know. All right, so. Kind of clustering it. Yeah, it looks like blossoms. And just a little bit of a, of a process. You can kind of see it as like the zen of cherry blossoms, you know, doing this right here. I find it fairly, fairly relaxing. If I was under a time limit, then that would be kind of nerve-wracking, but... All right, now, see where I put this in the lighter areas? You really can't see it very well, so let me just kind of break up the uh, shape of the uh, branch a little bit by putting some of these dots in front and behind, so on and so forth. You don't have to have everything right on the branch, okay? It doesn't really look quite look like a cherry, and you know, until we uh, use a little bit of pink here, which we'll do. But not right now. Almost there. I mean, isn't that fun? It sure changes the spirit of the uh, of the branch, of course. But that's why the branch was created like this. I, I have a different foliage. It's called leaf sprig, that, where you can add on as many uh, leaves as you want to it, or have it as sparse as you want, depending on how you look at it. Okay, now, let me put a few little highlights on some of these areas out here as well. Okay. I don't want to bring too much of this texture in the background, you know, because I want that branch to really stand out, but I don't know if I want it to be the only thing with that texture in there.
kind of redefining the uh, water's edge a little bit. Do it over here too. get some up in these hills. I'm kind of doing it on the top surfaces of things. Just giving it a little bit of a highlight. So if there's some tree lines, you know, a tree line up there. Just kind of going along with it at the top of it. But not if it's completely in darkness though. I don't want to do that because it'll stand out too much by contrast. See that? Those little touches here and there. Little touches here and there, right in here. Water's edge. You can use some of this tree here too. these tree trunks again a little bit where they're covered in gray. Here, these are some little blossoms. I'm going to have a few of these little petals kind of blowing in the wind, maybe, like that. These are kind of blowing on to one side, and I'll, I'm going to put some of these in the water, or it can be just little reflections. Okay, so that is that. I might add some more, but Let's use a little bit of this um, opaque. This is what just some white paint here. And this is a very, very opaque white watercolor paint. And I'll just, I'm just going to expand on some of these areas right in here. And it'll make it a little bit more dimensional. This bleed proof, right, really sits on the surface of the. Uh, Paper, or whatever you're, you know, using, it could be canvas or something like that. It really uh, sets up fairly quickly in a very opaque end result.
Okay. Not that any part of any of my videos are is like dynamic, you know, viewing, but uh, I don't know. Adding uh, whatever, 300 little dots, you know, dot by dot. Probably not very uh, a dynamic uh, experience either. <laughs> but like I said, it's pretty fun. Alright, so we have all those little petals throughout this branch right here and kind of floating in the wind. Like that. I have this pink Sharpie um, paint pen. It's those types that have kind of a little, you know, reservoir in there with the little I don't know, it's probably not metal, it's probably some kind of little plastic ball in there that mixes this paint. Um, you can use um, gel pens as well. I think, well, let me try a gel pen. Gel pens, I don't, I don't know if it's going to be as, um, well, let me try. Oh, actually, that works pretty good. I was going to say, I don't know if it'll hold up quite as much. Um, against this. It looks really good over the uh, white that I've just laid down, but the pink paint pen might be a little bit more kind of substantial as far as that opaque mark than the gel pen. But the gel pen works pretty good. This is a Shuttle Art gel pen, and it comes from their 100 and 80 color set that also happens to come with 180 refills but not too bad especially for kind of colors if you don't know if you're going to use them or you don't use them very often then it's kind of nice to having um, a large set like that for with pens that are very inexpensive and I don't know I, I don't find them to clog or anything like that on me even at that price point and, uh, you know, <laughs> theoretical quality. The quality is pretty good. Okay, so we have that pink in there. I'll just have some of this drifting down here as well and maybe it back here in the water. But let's try the, uh, this paint pen as well. Maybe the paint pen it's probably going to be a little bit less um, vibrant than that fluorescent one. There's all kinds of, there's pastel pinks that come in that um, set as well. That one happened to be the neon, so I don't know, it's kind of nice having you know, a variation of whatever hue you're working with, so it could represent I don't know, in this case, maybe the sh a different shade of pink within that space. We don't always have to just use one pink. You can use multiple tones, just like we have multiple values running through this scene. So you can have multiple values of whatever given color you're working on. Alright, so there we have it right here. I think I want to go a little bit more here. Uh, let's refine this a touch. Let's. I want this branch to stand out a little bit more. So let me go with some of the. Uh, some of the Dr. Martins. So you don't always have to just work in one direction. You can kind of, you know, you can add pink, add white on top of it, go back to the pink, add white on top of it. You know, just do it based on whatever you think something could use. So, little clusters of flowers, you know, it doesn't have to be just one 
tone of them. You can kind of add in accordingly. Layer things. All right, I think that looks okay. As far as that branch goes, I don't know, does it need a little bit more variation somewhere? Like a heavier concentration of flowers, maybe down here. Or petals, whatever. I haven't done this to this extreme before, so I'm trying to gauge it. Well, good enough, I think. All right, now my question is, is to myself is, um, I'm wondering if I should add a little tinge of pink in these trees, or if I want to just leave it at that. It's always hard to tell. Um, you know, speaking of some pastel colors, let's go with the pastel pink. This is that was, yeah, that's working fine. One of these, I had to change out the cartridge. Yeah, a little bit more pink to some of these petals now. Yeah, this is applying beautifully. Springtime, hmm. Let me try something here. This is a pale lilac. Nah, that's not. Let's see if I have a light enough pink. A really, really pale one. Let's try this right here. Let me add a little tinge to, uh, some of these trees over here. Just to kind of bring that hue into something else. It's very muted. One of the beautiful things of uh, alcohol pens is that they, they come in so many different values of all the different hues that they offer, so. Let 
Now remember where I had a really light pink over, over a darker gray, it's not going to look light pink, okay? It's not removing anything. So just giving it a slight tint. Okay, there's a little tinge of pink up there. A little bit down here. Let's see, these are some the same types of trees in the distance. Add some of that to that. Yeah, so I think that keeps it kind of in the spirit of that hue. It's very subtle. Uh, let's take a look at this. Okay. Nice kind of atmosphere in here. Might be able to use some more, slightly more um, pigment ink as it kind of dries off. It starts to get a little bit more translucent or a little bit more transparent, you know, kind of moving in that direction. So you kind of have to build it up a little bit more, you know, if you want it to, you know, retain the lightness that it was displaying when the pigment ink was wet. You have to kind of go back in here and kind of reintroduce it until you get a good enough, you know, a, a big enough of a buildup where it uh, kind of retains the spirit of the, a little bit more the spirit of a kind of wet applied uh, pigment ink. Okay. Yeah, it kind of glows a little bit more that way. But remember, as that dries, I might have to go into it for a third time. I'm not really quite sure. It depends how much ink has been laid down and how much of this ink you apply, I think. So you have to kind of make your adjustments accordingly. Just add a little bit more, you know. Get at it in the next day, too. Okay, let's see. I think that looks good for the fog. A little bit more of a atmospheric type of a condition there. All right, let me see. Let me when I put this black piece of paper down, my uh, exposure changed. So let me change that. Okay. That's probably a little bit more in the spirit of um, how dark this piece has become. But, kind of a fun composition. I mean, it's in one of those situations where it's really all about this branch in here. Than anything. Um, and about those very subtle, pale, pinkish tones of that branch. Let me put a few more of these up here. As I look at this, you know, other things kind of occur to me, so that's why I kind of go back in and add these little fine-tuned type of things. But they're also so much fun to do. Okay, so... Fun little composition. Pretty easy to do. Well, I think it takes a little bit of time, unless there's kind of a faster process, is adding these little blossom um, petals uh, in clusters around each one of these branches on here, giving it that kind of that look, hopefully. And anyway, I have to think of a title and get this uploaded. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.